Steve Fast with you on WJBC, 75 degrees at 841. And there, you know, every spring we participate in the Relay for Life here as part of the radio station. Of course, it's a community event. And one of the things that I've always learned from that particular event, and as you get older, you see more and more people whose lives are touched by cancer. And there is no shortage of dedicated individuals who are looking to fight cancer and to look for a cure or at least a more, uh, I guess I would say, less punishing way to treat the disease in all of its different forms. And there, uh, you know, a lot of things have helped. There's a lot better treatment than there used to be, but still the mystery remains. Sylvie Beljansky is vice president of the nonprofit Beljansky Foundation. It's based in New York City, and they support international leaders in environmental medicine research. And some of that research has involved the fight against various forms of cancer. And she joins us now. Sylvie Beljansky, thanks for being with us today. Good morning, Steve. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your foundation. Uh, it, your father, I believe, uh, is the founder of the foundation, and his work really uh, is very interesting. Thank you. With, with pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Indeed, the Beljansky Foundation is a 5013C3 uh, charitable organization of, uh, based in New York City, and it is uh, named after my late father, uh, Mirko Beljansky, who was a PhD at the Pasteur Institute uh, in Paris, and uh, he he is now considered as a father of environmental medicine. Uh, Therefore, the mission of the foundation is to study natural, non-toxic answers to cancer and to other chronic diseases, and uh, to share the knowledge uh, with people around the world, because that's what people need, actually. Well, it's interesting. You know, we often see scientific studies and reports that say there are certain foods, you know, eat more spinach and it's, it has a natural anti-cancer uh, property to it or, or more uh, green leafy vegetables and the like. And I think many people and doctors and scientists all agree, yes, that there are natural benefits to your diet that help fight off cancer. But when it comes to actually, you know, entering in through a course of treatment to fight cancer, you don't hear as much of that as an additive towards what maybe people think of more of uh, pharmaceutical cures uh, to fight off some of these various forms of cancer. Why is that? Well, uh, you know, in the, in the past, uh, for thousands of years, all mankind had to treat itself was plants. All there was was plant-based medicine. Uh, as Socrates said, uh, let food be thy medicine. Uh, at the ni- 19th century came the advent of chemistry, uh, and uh, in the 20th century, patent law, and medicine has become completely something else. It has now, it's all about um, discovering synthetic molecules that are patentable can bring a return on investment. So that has become now the playground. Um, money has become the playground of medicine. You see, you see drug companies on the first page of, I mean, they put their results on the first page of Wall Street Journal, and uh, it's all about financial results. So you see the price now of uh, some new drugs uh, coming out there, and there is a real outcry when you look at those prices, which actually disconnected with the real cost of making those, those medicines. Well, when you look at how some of, uh, you know, treatments go through the process of trials, and you have these clinical trials, and, and I think one thing you'll hear from the pharmaceutical industry when it comes to synthetic medicines, is to say that the research and development is so expensive. That's why, you know, we have a a vested interest in trying to control the market and, you know, in some cases protect the patents. But uh, there are certain weights that our regulatory system in the United States has to to benefit some of those companies. And And I wonder if your nonprofit organization has seen any barriers that have been put up by the FDA or others in 
you know, conducting uh, access, uh, conducting trials, but also access to some of the work and research that the organization has been involved in. The Berzhansky Foundation is not selling anything right. uh, beside a handful of books that help, you know, explaining the research and the life of Mirko Berzhansky. So the, the foundation has not had difficulties with the government in, in doing uh, research. The problem of the foundation, of course, is that because there is no uh, return on investment on this kind of, of research, uh, there is very uh, little funding available, which is really uh, breaking my heart when you, when you see the results uh, of this, the research that uh, the Belzhansky Foundation is, is having with its research program and the quality of the peer-reviewed papers which are being published. It doesn't seem that it raises a lot of interest from the entire, I mean, the, the entire community and definitely not from the, the drug companies. Uh, that said, uh, if the manufacturers of dietary supplements would be able to disseminate uh, this research, then it would be, uh, reach many more people, and uh, those people would, could, could make a, a that would, could make a difference. But uh, manufacturers uh, today, indeed, you are absolutely right, Steve, uh, they are not allowed to disseminate uh, research about the activity of uh, the ingredients that they are selling, uh, which kind of nonsense because uh, people are deprived of valuable information that could uh, help them to make uh, choices to help themselves, but that's the, the way it is now, that the, the law. There is actually in Congress a bipartisan bill, which is actually pending. It is called the Free Speech About Science Act. It is essentially about allowing public access to respected scientific research on foods and dietary supplements, and uh, people could, you know, Make use that for to make informed decisions about their, their diet and their health care, but the bill is currently stuck in Congress, and uh, it needs a grassroots support to make any progress. We're talking with Sylvie Beljansky. She is the vice president of the nonprofit Beljansky Foundation. They're based in New York City, and they are a nonprofit organization that looks into environmental medicine research and advocates for it. Well, you talk about this bill offering a more, I guess, free access to people understanding some of the research and the development of some of the research. Um, there have been some very interesting things that you have been using your foundation to to talk about. And in a few days here, we'll, we'll have Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month in September, uh, coupling certain extracts that are plant-based with chemotherapy has actually shown some promise in fighting ovarian cancer. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about some of the research that's been done. There have been a couple of major uh, researchers in, in universities that have looked into this. So what have we seen in the pairing of certain plant extra extracts in the course of using more traditional chemotherapy in fighting ovarian cancer? Sure. The, the, the research of the foundation is absolutely uh, unique uh, for two reasons. First, the scope of uh, the research. We are working on natural products. And uh, again, we are sharing it, meaning everything is being published and uh, we uh, keep nothing proprietary as a Belgiansky Foundation. So we have been conducted uh, the research with those uh, plant extracts, the Pao Pereira uh, extract and the reserpine-free Rovolfia vomitoria extract. And we have conducted a research with Columbia University on prostate cancer, with Kansas University on ovarian and pancreatic cancer, and currently we are working with the San Francisco University on glioblastoma, which is kind of brain cancer. And uh, we are working also, again, with Kansas University on stem cell uh, research. And uh, stem cells are very important because they are 
those um, cells which are resistant to chemotherapy and are in some ways the seeds for uh, new cancer and metastasis. Uh, so we we have been working with all those uh, different entities with the same plant extracts, and we have been able to see that those plant extracts were not actually active based on organ or gender, but they were work active across the board, and uh, also that they were working beautifully in synergy with different chemotherapies. Uh, we, for example, uh, on, for ovarian cancer, we have seen that Pau Pereira alone in vivo, and we are speaking here on, on the mice, uh, we, we had uh, like 79% of reduction of the tumor weight. And as, when you add Pau Pereira with carboplatin, which is the, um, the chemotherapy of choice for, for ovarian cancer, you get a reduction of the size of the tumor of 97%. Yeah. And, and when you go to, to pancreatic cancer, I mean, it is uh, also staggering uh, results. Paupera alone, 72%. Per, per, and when you add gemcitabine, 78%, even for um, tumors which are chemoresistant. So it, it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful research that we are most, uh, more than happy to to share with the public at the Belzhansky Foundation. And again, as you mentioned, this research and the results are not proprietary. You, you, this is something that you are offering up. This research is, you know, available to anyone for them to use, and it's you're not, uh, you know, it's not tied to any particular patent, right? All those papers can be downloaded at the website of the Belzhansky Foundation, www.belzhansky.org. Well, I want to ask you. I want to ask you also. I mean, what's really interesting about part of these uh, plant extracts that have been used is they're they're not tremendously common. What sort of plants have been the basis of of these extracts for these tests? They are not extremely common, they're, but I would not say that they are not also completely unknown. Uh, actually, uh, the web, on the website of Memorial Sloan Catering, they have dedicated a monograph on both the Pao Pereira and uh, the Revolfia vomitoria. So those plants are, are available, they are, they are out there. Uh, why we are choosing to, wor- to work with those uh, extracts at the Belzhansky Foundation, it is uh, because they stem directly from my late father's research. Uh, he, was, um, he, he was a PhD at the Pasteur Institute, and he was w- one of the first uh, scientists to look at how environment uh, affects our DNA. And uh, he had then the idea that if nature came up with carcinogens, nature also came up with natural anti-carcinogens. So he devised devised a test that he called the Onco test, and he looked for natural compounds which are able to do at the DNA level the exact opposite of carcinogens. And he was able to select two plants that were most active, according to his test, and that's the Revolfia vomitoria and the Paupera. That's why the Belzhansky Foundation, uh, named after my father, is continuing this research mostly with those two plant extracts for now. So tell us a little bit about what type of... Um, is there any other... Uh, research that you see being even more promising in using this. Do do you think that there is a concern amongst, um, I guess you would say, um, you know, regulators that that the research isn't um, isn't quite there yet? Uh, I mean, I don't know that you've done human uh, trials with some of these pairing with chemotherapy. You mentioned that using the, the, the mouse uh, for that trial. Um, what, uh, what would you like to see happen to move this research into the next step? Well, the, foundation, the Belzhansky Foundation uh, is doing a tremendous job with very little money. Uh, 
we, as a Belgian Ski Foundation, do not have the means now uh, to continue uh, research and take it to uh, uh, clinical trials, uh, although that would be uh, technically uh, possible on behalf of the foundation uh, if it had the means of, of doing so. Uh, there will again uh, be no, re- I mean, very little return on investment uh, when it is, you know, natural products that are not patented. That's why almost nobody I- is doing that. Uh, that said, I mean, do people need absolutely to have uh, clinical trials on everything? I am not sure that it is absolutely necessary uh, when, you know, toxicity uh, studies are being done, are available, and that you see that there is no toxicity um, associated with the extract. Well, Sylvia Beljanski, thank you so much for joining us this morning and talking about the foundation and your father's research and the, uh, the complicated path that some of this research may have to take to get to clinical trials and uh, benefit, you know, uh, everyday patients who are going through, you know, some some of the treatment for various forms of cancer. I appreciate you talking with us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Sylvia Beljansky is vice president of the nonprofit Beljansky Foundation, and she is uh, based in New York City. We'll uh, be back right after this.